everybody, I'm Tiffany from Comic Pop, and I'm here with the absolutely incredibly talented James Tynan the Fourth. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing really well. All right, we're in the Boom Studios booth right now because we're going to be talking about something is killing the children. It's actually one of my top two favorite indie books that are coming out right now. Well, thank you it's so much. I really one, appreciate it's it. It's one of my favorite comics coming up. Period. Uh, I, <laughs> seriously, that that's so amazing to hear. Like the the fact that we are just one issue into this series and we've seen such incredible support. You know, I was hanging out with a cosplayer of Erica Slaughter uh, yesterday. We we gave out uh, bandanas based on the book. We kind of start in the middle of it in a way. Yeah. Like you're just like here's something. We're gonna cut to something else. <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was just so well done. Thank you. I have to ask, where did the story come from? Um, it started with the title, which really? is a weird place to start. Okay. Uh, I, the first thing I ever wrote that was called "Something Is Killing the Children" uh, was something I did in college, and it had nothing to do with the comic that exists today. Okay. It was an, a completely, completely like separate concept. Mm -hmm. And what I really, really wanted to like, I wanted to find a story good enough for it. Yeah. And the first time I tried pitching a, a version of "Something Is Killing to Boom." Uh, was 2014 and it's come up a number of times in the past where it's just like I had these elements I knew a monster emerging in a small town and that it would be in upstate Wisconsin because you know I grew up in Milwaukee Wisconsin and and the northern woods of Wisconsin is where a lot of the the horror in my brain like comes from right and the there really was this kind of building aspect where every couple of years I would like revisit it and I would add one more element but then I would sort of sit down and try coming up with the story and the story really was wasn't there uh, and then it was towards the end of last year when boom was talking to me about like okay is it is this the time is, are we finally gonna do something is killing the children yeah that I came up with the final element and the final element was this monster hunter Erica yeah. slaughter and I, I had this image of this blonde, this uh, small blonde woman who's on a bus and you can see her eyes are sunken it's like she's been awake for days and mm -hmm. days and days there's a kind of haggard uh, tiredness to her yes and she's like she arrives she gets off this bus and she's not she's not like decked out with a crazy sword or anything right. she just has a, a a kid's backpack and it with a stuffed octopus inside of it and uh, and and this bandana yeah. uh, with these teeth on it and she's going to she's going to arrive and she's going to stop what's killing the children yes and uh, that that's really where the story started coming together and uh, it started becoming what it is today. In terms of horror and supernatural, you're no stranger to yep. it, obviously, <laughs> um, which I love. But you definitely are hitting on two, I think, universal fears. There is something about the woods, yep. and there is something about when you're a kid, you think everything's after you. Yep. <laughs> like the monster under the bed, that kind of thing. Were you going for that? Were you trying to encapsulate that feeling of like, the woods can be beautiful in the daytime, Yeah. but after a certain hour, it's like, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that it's a very human thing. I remember actually for the, the first pitch for uh, one of my other Boom series, The Woods. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I started, like that pitch started with something that I think is honestly more appropriate to this story than that one, which is just like, there's a reason man has always feared the woods. Mm -hmm. And it's just, the, it's something that I think is built into us, like biologically. Yeah. It is the fact that, you know, we, back when before civilization it's just like the woods at night are where things are going to come out of the dark and try to kill you yes and it is a dangerous place it is like it is archetypal in in, in its danger yeah. and uh one of the things that i really like exploring in uh, in something is killing the children is the fact that this is a a comic about about how kids see the abstract horrors of the world as something more concrete and more solid than adults do. Yeah. Adults, uh, adults see ev the, all of the small ways that the world, and big ways that the world is wrong, mm -hmm. but they see it as all of these individual different things. But kids understand the more basic truth, that there is something out there that's going to hurt them and could kill them mm -hmm. uh, that is a real and active and present danger to their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that that is the the heart of the series. Yeah, yeah, I really do love that you used kids. We've all been there, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, that camaraderie, that fear, also that experience of going to school. Maybe you're not the most popular, maybe you are a little different. And then yeah. on top of it, you had this experience that like, 
nobody wants to believe happen even if you do believe it because it's like yeah. if you accept that then you accept the fact that there is something beyond our control out yeah. there i really think you hit that so well and then to introduce erica on top of it as this kind of like i know what i'm doing yeah it's cool the fact that one of the kids is going along with her yeah i mean obviously i have no idea where this is going <laughs> but i was like i love this partnership werther <laughs> Deladera, i think is doing the work of his career on this uh yeah. A uh, boom set us together, and he was actually the one who introduced the bandana to the concept of Erica. And the second he drew her, it was like, yes, this is like we made the right choice. He is the right person for this job. Yeah. Um, and you know, the other thing that I have to say, the like both in general and specifically about Werther, is that I've been doing a lot of stuff at DC Comics that is very larger than life. And yes. In Justice League, it's huge, cosmic, multiversal stakes. Yes. In. Uh, you know, in Justice League Dark, it's deep magic and all of this stuff. But there's a, there's a real power to the real world, the grounded real world that op that operates on the same rules that the one that we live in. Uh, you know, and it's it, it's also very freeing because if you know if you go to the you know the House of Heroes, the center of the multiverse, the, in the DC universe, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Like you need to explain like a hundred things to understand the setting mm -hmm. that you're in. If you want to do a scene in an Applebee's, you can do a scene in an Applebee's, <laughs> and everyone understands that yes. it's like, okay, this is an Applebee's. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that that is very much like there's a power in using the real world, yes. and then also bringing fantastic elements into it. Yeah. Uh, and Werther does such an amazing job. That, those were the pages of his when we were like looking at different artists to approach for the book. It was seeing Werther's art uh, where he was just. It was a page where he drew a gas station, where I was like, "This is this is the setting. This is the tone." Yep. The addition of Mikel Muerto on colors for the series. It's just the the vibrant reds and blues yes. like that just brought it all to life and yeah. you know it's a beautiful looking book and I also can't like say enough good things about the amazing Jenny Frisson variant we have we have so many amazing yeah. variants to the series but it's just like that Jenny Frisson one yes. is just like she's absolutely stunning she's so incredible honestly the art in the book is perfectly disturbing in the right way because of that grounding like you said in the real world you have some like a uh, images in the first book of the kids with what is happening to them and it gave me some like real almost saving private ryan kind of vibe where it's yeah. just like it's this horror scene that's happening because you grounded it yeah like that's what makes it so shocking to the core. Yeah. if you have not picked up something is killing the children you still can because boom is still printing them because they know how much you want them and you, you got to go get it i mean like seriously when i say it's one of my favorite books coming out right now no lie no lie it is phenomenal i can't wait to read more thank you so much for sharing the story with us and thank you so much for talking with us yeah thank you <laughs> i'm tiffany from comic pop bye guys